the tear film breakup test, and grating staining at the ocular surface. Topically instilled fluorescein is used to assess both tear film stability and ocular surface damage. Other dyes, such as lysamine green, are used to assess damage alone. Neither fluorescein nor lysamine green drops cause discomfort on installation. The standard test for measuring tear film stability is the tear film breakup test, or TFBUT. This measures the time taken for a fluorescein stained tear film to break down after a blink. Dye tests of ocular surface damage use grading charts to quantify the amount of staining present. Dye selection. For reasons of contrast and visibility of staining, it is common to use fluorescein to estimate surface damage to the cornea and lysamine green to estimate damage to the bulbar conjunctiva. However, when fluorescein is enhanced with a yellow barrier filter, such as aratin number 12, fluorescein staining can be used to grade staining on both the cornea and the bulbar conjunctiva as well. In this patient with dry eye, the visibility of the corneal staining pattern has been greatly enhanced by viewing through a yellow filter. Here you can see the brilliant fluorescence of the tear film overlying a normal conjunctiva. There is pooling of dye in the folds of the conjunctiva. There is pooling of the fluorescent tears, but no sign of punctate staining. In contrast, in this patient with severe dry eye, viewed through a yellow filter, you can see extensive fluorescein staining of the exposed conjunctiva. Sequence of testing. In this demonstration, you will see the following sequence. One, using fluorescein to measure tear film stability and to grade staining on the cornea and conjunctiva. 2. Using lysamine green to grade staining on the conjunctiva alone. The tear film breakup test and grading staining at the ocular surface with fluorescein dye. The patient is seated comfortably at the slit lamp looking straight ahead and blinking normally. An impregnated fluorescein strip is prepared. Opening the envelope away from the impregnated tip and moistening the tip with a single drop of sterile saline. As soon as the tip is fully wetted, the excess is shaken off briskly, and the drop is delivered quickly and lightly to the back of first the right and then the left lower tarsal plate. The patient is asked to blink freely several times to distribute the fluorescein. Then the breakup time is read, first on the right, then on the left eye, and then staining is graded, first on the right and then the left eye first on the cornea, and then on the conjunctiva. For clinical trials, the tests are performed slightly differently in a clinical trial to improve standardization. The procedure is as follows. A drop of sterile 2% fluorescein is placed in the sterile casing from a unit dose dispenser. A sterile tip is fitted to the variable volume pipette. The volume is set, and that volume of fluorescein is aspirated into the pipette. This precise volume can then be instilled into the lower conjunctival sac. 2. The sequence of measurement of the TFBUT and staining. In many clinical trials, the average of two or three measurements of the breakup time is required by protocol. This is time consuming and the delay may influence the quality of measurement in the second eye. For this reason, it is more appropriate to instill dye first in the right eye, recording the breakup time and grading staining in that eye, then on the left, making the same measurements there. Measuring the tear film breakup time. Each eye is examined using the blue exciter source of the slit lamp. A yellow absorption filter placed over the slit lamp objective, e.g., a ratin 12, enhances fluorescence. 
and allows grading to be performed on both the cornea and the conjunctiva. With the patient looking straight ahead, fluorescein is instilled into the right lower conjunctival sac. The patient is asked to blink freely several times and advise that at some point they will be asked to stop blinking. The fluorescein stained tear film is observed with the slit lamp and when a homogeneously stained film is established at the end of the blink, the patient is asked to stop blinking and the stopwatch is started. At the first appearance of a distinct breakup in the fluorescein film, the stopwatch is stopped and the time noted as the breakup time. The investigator now proceeds to grade the ocular surface staining as follows. Dyes in use for grading staining. Fluorescein. It was noted earlier that with the use of a yellow barrier filter to enhance fluorescence, fluorescein may be used to grade epithelial staining on both the cornea and the conjunctiva. Bengal Rose. It is rare to use Bengal rose drops for staining because of the intense stinging they cause. However, Bengal rose impregnated strips are available and are used in the same way as lysamine green strips for the purpose of assessing conjunctival damage. Lysamine green. Lysamine green is used to grade staining on the conjunctiva alone and, like fluorescein, may be instilled either from a prepared impregnated strip or as a pipette drop using a similar approach. Where a commercial 1% solution is available, it will give a more intense staining pattern on the conjunctiva than that achieved by an impregnated strip. Installation of lysamine green solution. For lysamine green, a volume of say 20 microliters of the 1% solution is instilled over the upper bulbar conjunctiva with the eyes looking downwards and the upper lid retracted. The lids are allowed to close gently so that excess dye can be removed with tissues at the outer canthus without staining the skin. The dye may also be instilled into the lower conjunctival sac. Prolonged light exposure will diminish the intensity of staining with lysamine green. Grading staining, clinical trial version. The amount of damage to the ocular surface may be graded by comparing the staining pattern observed in a patient with the slit lamp with the same patterns depicted on grading charts. The cornea is scanned first with the eye looking straight ahead and the upper lid raised so that the whole cornea may be seen. Then the exposed temporal conjunctiva is graded with the eye looking nasally in the horizontal plane and the nasal conjunctiva with the eye looking temporally in the horizontal plane. The lids are not raised. Assessment is made with a natural palpable aperture. Grading systems. Many systems are available and three are presented here. Further details are provided on the TFOS website. The grading panels should be readily visible to the examiner during evaluation. When the assessment is made, the gestalt appearances of the ocular staining and panels are compared. No attempt should be made to count the dots of staining or to assess the position or confluence of the dots. The observer should see which panel best represents the pattern of staining on the cornea or conjunctiva and record the corresponding grade number. The Van Bijsterveld chart. The Van Bijsterveld chart asks the observer to grade from 0 to 3 for each exposed zone using a performer drawing as a guide to the grades. Grade 0 is no stain. Grade 1 is a few separated spots. Grade 2 is many separated spots and grade 3 is confluent spots. The maximum score is 9. The NEI Industry Workshop Scheme in the NEI Industry Workshop Scheme, the staining grade is recorded for five corneal regions and three temporal conjunctival regions and three nasal conjunctival regions. The staining scale is 0 to 3 for each region, giving a maximum possible score of 33. The Oxford Grading Scheme 
In the Oxford grading scheme, staining is represented by punctate dots on a series of panels, A through E, with the dots increasing, ordered on a log scale. Staining ranges from 0 to 5 for each panel, giving a maximum score of 15 for the total exposed conjunctiva and cornea. It is important for the observer to be clear about the boundaries of each grade. For the Oxford scheme, grade 0 is staining that is equal to or less than panel A. Grade 1 is staining that is equal to or less than panel B, greater than A. Grade 2 is staining that is equal to or less than panel C, greater than B, and so on. Finally, here are three examples. In this patient, corneal staining is greater than panel A, greater than panel B, greater than panel C, but less than panel D. Therefore, the grade is 3. In this patient, conjunctival staining is greater than panel C, greater than panel D, and probably greater than panel E. Therefore, the grade is 5. In this patient, too, stained with lysamine green, conjunctival staining is probably greater than panel E. Therefore, the grade is 5. More information can be found on the TFOS website. Thank you for watching.